My name's Georgie Jameson. I'm a presenter and producer at BBC Radio Suffolk. I'm also one of the directors of the British Comedy Society. I'm a Suffolk girl, born and bred. I grew up here and we lived in various places across the county because for the first seven or eight years of my life, my dad was a policeman. And so we lived in I, then we moved to Halesworth. Uh, or then before that, we were in Foxhall, then we moved to Halesworth. And then he gave up the police and uh, started his own business in the late 1970s as a plumbing and heating engineer. And we moved to Martlesham Heath, which was a brand new housing development at the time. And I remember we were in one of the first roads to be built, Cooper's Road, and building was going on all around us. I went to Gorsland Primary School and then to Kesgrave High School. Uh, my mum was at home. I was very lucky. I had a mum at home cooking and looking after us all. There's just me. I'm an only child. Uh, not a particularly artistic family, but creative, always creative. My mum taught me to cook and so did my granddad. He was a chef in the Merchant Navy just after the war for his national service. He was a great cook, as was my mum. And my dad was very funny, still is, uh, probably the funniest person I know. And he really influenced me. He's also musical. I haven't heard him play anything for a long time, but he did play drums in the 60s in a band in and around Wickham Market. They played in pubs and do's and wedding receptions. So we had a lot of music in the family, lots of records, the Beach Boys and the Beatles and Queen and some country music as well, which has influenced me later on in life. I'm a huge new country fan. I grew up with classic British comedy in the house. And as a teenager, I discovered radio comedy. I was uh, at a car boot sale and I saw these tapes, that dates it, of Round the Horn, a 1960s comedy show which had Kenneth Williams in it. Now, we always used to watch Carry On films at home. Bank holidays, they would come on. So I loved Kenneth Williams. I, they were only like a couple of pounds. So I bought them, took them home, played them. My dad said, oh, we used to listen to this on a Sunday lunchtime. And I absolutely loved it. I roared laughing. I lent them to all my friends. They loved it too. And that was how I dis first discovered radio comedy. And from that, I tapped into things like the Navy Lark and then the news headlines, which I had the honour of writing for in uh, 2001. The last two series of that on BBC Radio 2. And some friends of mine here in Suffolk, Alan Stafford, uh, who is a writer, he'd written for Hudlines and he became a commissioned writer and said, you ought to have, give it a go, George. Write some topical gags about this week's news. See if you, they get through. And they did. Roy and June and Chris, the wonderful Dame June Whitfield, Roy Hud, who sadly just died at the beginning of the year. And Chris Emmett and uh, Carol Smith, the, the uh, producer and the team, like them and they started using them and I even got to go to the Christmas recording and the drinks party afterwards and it was just wonderful to hear my jokes being read out by those amazing people from the world of comedy and getting big laughs as well is uh, just something I'll, I'll always remember. My favourite kind of comedy is traditional comedy, comedy from the 70s. The Two Ronnies and The Good Life and Faulty Towers and Porridge. But for me, there will never be any others but Morecambe and Wise. They were the pinnacle of British comedy as far as I'm concerned. I absolutely adore them and always, always will do. And I love to absorb everything about what they did and how they did it and how they met and there's been various documentaries and tons and tons of books about them and I think I've got all of them and in recent years I've been very lucky to interview Gary Morecambe, Eric's son and Gail Morecambe, his daughter as well but particularly Gary who has written a lot of books about his dad and Ernie and he's become a great friend 
and uh, I've had had lunch with him and his sister and uh, a chap who collects Morecambe and Wise memorabilia at Eric and Ernie on Twitter, who's also become a great friend. And uh, it's just wonderful, amazing to know I can phone up Gary Morecambe and say, hang on, have I got this right about your dad? And he can uh, he can just fill me in. <laughs> I wanted to be an actress when I grew up. I loved the radio and I loved radio comedy and I loved radio drama, but I wanted to go on stage. I wanted to be a stage actress. I didn't particularly want fame and I knew it wouldn't come with any fortune if I worked on stage, but it was live theatre for me and that's always been an absolute love of mine. And that was one of the reasons I joined the Wolsey Youth Theatre. I was never much of a dancer or a singer, so I was never going to be what they call a triple threat. Radio was always in the back of my mind, but I hadn't thought about it as a career. I think probably because when I was growing up in the 70s and 80s, you could count on one hand the amount of women that were on the radio. There was Annie Nightingale, who was on late at night. There was Gloria Hunniford, who was on Radio 2 in the afternoon doing recipes for lemon meringue pie. They were hardly groundbreaking. My radio heroes were Kenny Everett and Noel Edmonds and Terry Wogan. But it was all male voices. I just, I think subconsciously I thought, that's not something women do. And it wasn't until I'd done a series of what I call proper jobs, and there's been a lot of those, children's portrait photographer in a department store, Uh, working on the underwear counter in Marks and Spencers, running a boutique, going back to the uh, portrait people but doing sales. Then I went to work for a cruise line company, worked in admin, found myself somehow in the IT department of that. And then I had a career break to have my little boy, went back, when he went back for six months and was made redundant. And that's when... I decided, do you know, I'm going to give this radio a go. I'd been a contributor, an unpaid contributor for a long time on BBC Radio Suffolk. And by that, I mean, they would call on me to comment on the news of the day. I would come on a lot and talk about the shows that I was in at the Sir John Mills Theatre or the Woolsey or wherever it might be. I'd come in and do Sunday paper reviews. So I knew a lot of people at the station. And so I went in for a Women in Radio Day in 2014 and I got selected. There was about a thousand women across the UK who submitted demo tapes. 90 of us were selected, so I was very, very honoured to uh, take part. I went to Broadcasting House, learnt so much in that one day and then said to uh, our editor here, Peter Cook at BBC Radio Suffolk, can I have a go? (laughs) He said, well, I can't just give you a show straight away, but you can come and learn to be what we call a BA, broadcast assistant. And I started covering travel on the breakfast show when uh, the regular presenter was on holiday. And I learned how to answer the phones and produce the programmes And then I made some demos of my own. And that's basically how it happened. I just kept knocking on the door, being a pest, being a pain and saying, I'll do that. I'll have a go at that. Let me learn that. And that's kind of how it happened, really. And so that's gradually over the last 11 years or so that I've hammered my way through the door and uh, eventually ended up as a producer and a presenter here and it's one of the best things I've ever done because I now feel that I've got a creative job, a creative role. I love talking to people, I love listening to people, I love interviewing people because essentially I'm just quite nosy and I guess that's what I love about radio. It's so intimate and it's just you talking to one other person There's two great bits of advice that Terry Wogan always said about radio. Uh, You're talking to one person at home. You're not talking to a lot of people. You're just talking one-to-one. You're talking to one person. Make them feel special. 
That's why he always used to mention the listener rather than listeners. And the other piece was, a piece of advice, which is great, is they either like you or they don't. And that's taken a lot of getting used to. If you know, if people who say, oh, I can't stand her, then that, they're perfectly entitled to. There's plenty of people on TV and radio that I think, oh, I can't put up with this. We all have them. And I have to accept that not everybody is going to like me. When you put yourself out there in the public eye or the public ear, as it were, then not everyone's going to, but hopefully they find something of interest in the show, whatever it might be. I like to mix it up and have all different sorts of things. And it does take a lot of energy to be a presenter. You do have to be on. And I laugh a lot. I laugh a lot at everything. I love to laugh. Not everybody likes my laugh. It's a bit of a cackle. It's not put on. It is my laugh. There's not much I can do about it. It's a bit of a carry on laugh. I know not everybody um, appreciates it, but there's not a great deal I can do about it, really. It's just me. And you have to be you when you're on air, but you have to be a larger than life you. And four hours of that, as we're doing at the moment, four hour shows, yeah, it can be. It's a weird exhausting because you've been sat talking and you think surely that can't take it out of you. But it does. It really does. But I wouldn't change it. It's... um. It's wonderful, absolutely wonderful, and the the best decision I ever made. I am a Suffolk girl, and Suffolk means a lot to me. It's home, and it's where I'm bringing up my son with my husband, and I absolutely love it. I wouldn't change it. We have everything. Uh, and I couldn't live too far away from the sea. I've always lived at least half an hour away from the sea, but no further. And it's what I'm missing the most about lockdown is not being able to just get in the car and go to the sea. I miss seeing the sea. That's the biggest thing. But otherwise, I'm managing okay. I'm at home with my boys. I'm baking a lot. I love to bake. I'm listening to a lot of country music. I'm knitting and I've discovered some art as well. I'm not very good at it, but I've discovered it. I love to walk. Normally I love to swim and I go swimming two or three times a week. I can't do that at the moment. That is how I would relax. And yoga as well and just spending time with my husband and my son. I'm very lucky. I consider myself very lucky that I can come in to work and still be creative and still do my Saturday show. I miss my Friday night arts and entertainment show but it will be back and when it is I am on a mission to get everybody back into the cinemas, the independent cinemas the theatres, the art galleries, once it's safe to do so then the music venues, singer songwriters we have so much creativity in Suffolk, we are so so lucky and I will fully champion all of that creativity as soon as we're able to and as soon as we can get that big night in back on a Friday night and uh, start celebrating Suffolk and its creativity again. Mm -hmm. 